everyone. Welcome to a special Super Bowl edition of the Bolt City Podcast. We'll talk, of course, Charger football in this show. So if you're saying, hey, I tuned in just for the Chargers and these guys talk Super Bowl only, that's not the case. It's not what's going to happen. I'm asking you to do what I've been asking you the last couple of shows because guess what? It's working. Again, it gives us the opportunity to stay with you throughout uh, 2024. So if you're watching right now, if you're listening, especially if you're watching on YouTube, if you want to <laughs> cough, go ahead. But if you want to subscribe, we'll take that as well. So if you can subscribe, fantastic, but really helps us out. You click that like button. So that thumb right there, go ahead and click the thumb while you're looking at it. You're doing nothing else. Just click the damn thumb. Do us a favor. <laughs> at the same time, hey, if you have something going on, someone's calling you in the other room, but you're watching the show, Hey, just leave it on. Put up play. We want it to play all the way through. All that stuff helps us out. We want to be around for not only 2024, 2025, 2026. Somewhere in those three years, Chargers are going to win a Super Bowl, and we want to be part of it. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't want to just end up calling Mario and Josh, and Josh calling Mario and me, and the whole deal. You understand how it works. We want to share with everyone else that's a Charger fan out there when the Chargers start having success. Chiefs hit tonight. Final score, guys, in overtime. Chiefs win 25-22. Mario, you're the gambling guy. What was the over-under today for the game? 47 and a half. Vegas knows, gentlemen. Vegas, Vegas freaking knows. Vegas always knows. Yes. Vegas always knows. Unbelievable right there. So, yeah, 47 and a half, and they hit on 47. And, Josh, I'll ask you to start the show. Where does the Super Bowl rank throughout the Super Bowls you've seen? All right. I'm 30 years old, so 1993 was when I was born. Didn't start watching the Super Bowl until 2000, so I don't I haven't seen all of them. Uh, number one, the best Super Bowl I've ever seen. I loved it. I mean, I don't love it because I hate the Chiefs, but from a fan standpoint, it is the best Super Bowl I've ever seen. Mario, do you feel the same way? This one? You don't think this one was? I I, I still think which one the was Patriots, better? Patriots. Falcons, oh, Patriots Falcons. Like, okay, that's that yeah. was a great game. That was a great game. Yeah. I, yeah. Ah. Been, been on the good side of betting for both of those, Josh. So that, I think that's why I also am a big favorite. Like if I was the, on the opposite side of this, I would have broken a window in my um, best friend's house and probably broken this guitar that I'm looking at right now that the strings on the floor. <laughs> what do you think, Dave? Where, where would you put this? All right. First Super Bowl I remember right here. This is going to scare Mario when I, when I tell him. First Super Bowl I remember is Super Bowl thirteen. It was Steelers, Dallas Cowboys in Miami. That's the first one that I can recall. And I think I was in third grade, I believe, when that when that Super Bowl was played. But it was a famous Lynn Swan catch from Terry Bradshaw. There's a part in the game where uh, Roger Staubach hits the tight end right in the heart. I mean, the ball hits him right in the heart. Final score is like 35-31. And the announcer says he's the sickest man alive. And the, him dropping that ball and the Cowboys not winning literally cost him getting in the Hall of Fame for like 40 years until he finally got in. But it was it was absolutely uh, the, the first time I, first one I remember and then Ram Steelers the following year. But out of all of them, Josh, I'm with you. I've seen a lot of them and the ones I didn't see, I've gone back and I've Watched the, to the best of my ability as much footage as I can on all 58 Super Bowls. This was the best one for me as far as entertainment and loving the game. Like, I, I love the game of football. You guys love the game of football. Um, just watching a game entertainment wise, I watched the game. I told all my friends, get out because we're doing a show and, and I'm going to sit there and keep notes for every one of these plays. But my wife was right next to me. And she's not a football fan, she was in it the whole game. The, whole, the entire time she was into the game. So if you're into the game and you aren't a fan of the sport, it shows it was a pretty exciting game. And even though I'm not a Niner fan and I'm definitely not a Chiefs fan, um, I like the fact it wasn't Brock Purdy's fault. That's how I felt. Like I thought Brock Purdy took so much heat going into this game unfairly that I like the fact it didn't come down to, hey, the 49ers could have won, but man, it was Brock Purdy's fault. Mr. Irrelevant screwed this organization over and that wasn't the case. I like to judge games by the people that aren't fans, what they thought. Because really, they're the ones that don't watch the game. Do you think it was good? Do you think it was bad? I watched it with my grandma and my fiance, and they watched the entire game from first quarter all the way through overtime. And they were like, that's probably the best football game I've ever seen. I think Mario, it's right there as the best ever. I understand the Falcons and Patriots was great. At that time, I had fatigue of Tom Brady. Of Come on, man. How many times is this going to happen? Obviously, Mahomes is the guy I don't want to keep winning. But I respect it because he is the next Tom Brady, if I can say that. I think he's definitively the second best quarterback of all time. 
I think we were to talk about that in a second. But right there for me, Mario, I think it's right there towards the top. I'm trying to think of the best Super Bowls that I've seen. Steelers, Cardinals, I remember was one of the best games ever. Both Giants, Patriots, uh, obviously Patriots, Falcons, the Seahawks, Patriots with the interception on the goal line. But Mario, I think right now it's towards the top. It's po- but my question, though, really is Mahomes, is he the second greatest quarterback of all time? I think so far, clear in advance, he is. Like, absolutely no question about it. I don't think it's up for debate anymore. What we see now and where we're at now of three Super Bowls, and this guy's 28 years old. Like, he is 28 freaking years old. Like, it's only going to go up from here. It's only going to get better from here. And, you know, he mentioned it after the game. Like, yes, when you look at Kelsey, Kelsey's old. And, you know, he did his, you know, we're going to come back next year. And Kelsey's old, but that defense is young. And Pacheco's young, right? And it seems like every move they make seems like it's going to work out for him. And if I'm any receiver that's up on any contract, why wouldn't you want to go to Kansas City besides you would really hate living there? Like, that, like why not go there and go win a Super Bowl really quickly? Um, I just think that's a given. He's the second best ever. Will he take Tom Brady's goat spot? The Super Bowls is incredibly hard to chase. I will always be against him. He's definitely in the conversation. He passes Manning. Sorry for all the indie friends that are listening to this pod. Kick your crap out here. Um, he's passed him. He's passed Breeze. He's passed Montana. Marino. Kick, you know, go screw yourself, man. No shot. Um, I think he's by far the second best um, quarterback of all time. And I think we're also forgetting, by the way, the best Super Bowls ever. Eli Manning ruining Randy Moss and Tom Brady was also fantastic. I, I remember that game and just going. I think I said just, that. Yeah. It's okay. Did, did it's you fun. say that? I did. It's okay. Oh. Don't worry about I've it. I've had a lot to drink today, so that's my bad. You also ate 75 chicken nuggets, um, I think. I did do that. Yeah. Dude, You're it insane. was. Yeah. 30. So it was 75 chicken nuggets did in three hours. Um, the first 30. <laughs> wait, hold, wait, wait. Was this a bet? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, the okay. other show. I was about to say, what are you, a deranged third grader? No, I mean, it felt like <laughs> it. high. Yeah. I wish I was. It would have made it easier. Uh, it was Bet for the Cycle, the show I do. It's live on every Saturday for the BetQL Network. And we do a show parlay. We've both been losing. So, like, hey, let's just do the – the Pellers wants to be 75 chicken nuggets. So let's just both do it because we've been both sucking. So we did it. And, dude, I was like – I I was – I felt so out of it. Like, I literally felt just not human. Like, I felt like someone, like – I don't even know. Like, I can't even explain the feeling. I felt, like, drunk, but not drunk. Like, a depressed, I'm fat, drunk. But I wasn't. Like, that's just, like, I guess the state I was in. Wait, you were high on chicken nuggets? Is that what you just said? I No, it wasn't, like, but, like, it was a, like, a depressing, like, I feel terrible. I feel huge. I'm so foggy in my head right now. Like it was, it was all, I didn't eat. So I didn't eat from three. I didn't eat from two thirty five yesterday until three o'clock today. So I did a 24 hour. I just didn't eat. I was like, dude, I can't, can't put anything in my body right now. All right, here you go. We're going to get into this football thing. Cause, but, but you, I always find you fascinating when you okay. fast like that, you understand your stomach shrinks. Like you yeah. got to You got to kind of keep eating to keep your stomach stretch up. But when you shrink your stomach down, you, you make it tougher on yourself. I mean, this is the second food eating contest you've done in a month. Yeah, it's not going good. So yeah. tomorrow I'm starting a diet, like a hard. I'm doing 30 days carnivore diet. No, no, nothing, baby. No cheating, no nothing. We're we're getting ripped. Okay. See you on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. So no, wait, carnivore. No salads. No salads. We're doing straight carnivore. <laughs> is that going to make you gain weight? I mean, in the forty-minute research that I did today, I don't think so. <laughs> like, it's right. a, yeah. it could work. I'm sure. I've never dieted before, so I want to follow you. Yeah, I, I mean, know how this goes. Yeah, I, I want to take like, dude. I'll let you know. I want I want to take pictures and stuff. I'm going to take like levels and crap. Like, I want to be really see like how far this goes. But you're supposed to get more ripped from it. I'm trying to like lose a little bit because I just, I mean, I didn't eat well today either. I just, I've ruined my body. I mean, I've put it. Through. I've taken probably five years off my life the past like three weeks. All right, so here's here's always my theory, by the way. You can eat whatever you want on Super Bowl Sunday, All yeah. right, no matter what. I don't care what kind of diet you Agreed. follow, what kind of workout. 
till the end. But Super Bowl Sunday, it's all off. You can you can have the the onion dip, the whole deal. You know what I mean? The French onion dip with the ruffles, the whole everything. If you can find someone that will make it for you, it's great. But you you can eat all the junk you want. But you can also do the same thing the two weeks before the end of the year is my feeling too. You know, like mm. when nobody's really working, you know, where, hey, we'll circle back at the beginning of the year when we ha- actually start thinking about work again in a regular job. You can eat whatever you want from basically December 15th through the all the way to January 2nd. You can eat whatever you want. There's, there's no penalty. And then now, as you said, tomorrow, hey, guess what? It's going to start warming up in a month and the shirt's probably going to have to come off and you're still trying to pick up everybody, pick up the girls. And, and here you are. You got to look good. You can't look like you're bloated from 75 chicken nuggets. Oh, so like for people that don't know, I do like a, a calorie counter like thing. And dude, putting that in was the worst thing of all time. Like I put that in and I got an alert on the app saying like warning, sodium levels are like record high, like, but like so many warnings. And I was like, this is so bad. This is so bad. So yeah, no more food challenges. No more of that. I'm going to relax on that one. Unless it's like, you're the one that eat. keeps signing up. Like I know. I, but what's so, your deal? So the next one has to be like a whole head of lettuce, like something really crazy. Healthy <laughs> and not like, lettuce. yeah, to be like that. <laughs> That'd be the worst contest on TV ever. So you could eat a whole head of lettuce. Actually, that's I'm going to write that down for our next punishment. <laughs> head of lettuce. Cause that's very funny. That's that sounds ridiculous. All right couple things. Let's get back to the fo- football because I got a lot to say about this game too. And and you said the history of it. Look, Mahomes, Josh, is outstanding. The craziest thing about Mahomes for me is the guy plays his best not only in the second half, but the closer you get to the end of the game, he even gets better. Like there are times I look at Mahomes and go, this guy's not that good. Like he's not that accurate. He does some dumb things. I, like I, I want to dislike him. I understand he's on the Chiefs. If he's wearing a Charger uniform, I'd be the other way. But when it matters most, he's the ultimate winner. He's he's a great player. He's a great closer. He's a champion. He's a winner. His stats already are insane at the age he is. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer right now. If he said, hey, I'm retiring, he's going to the Hall of Fame. To say he's automatically passes Montana, I'm not so sure. I mean, Montana 4-0 and outstanding. The difference is Terry Bradshaw was 4-0 too. But if you look at Bradshaw, he threw as many interceptions as touchdown passes. He wasn't like great, great, but he was surrounded by Hall of Famers, Hall of Fame running back, two Hall of Fame wide receivers, Hall of Fame offense alignment all over the place. But Mahomes is on pace, and I expect him to be this way. Josh, when it's all said and done, it's going to be Brady and Mahomes. He, he will be number one or number two when it's all over. Just today, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but it it was, I think you're looking at a few Hall of Famers today, just on the offensive side of the ball. And what I mean is Mahomes Hall of Famer, Kelsey's Hall of Famer. Dude, Andy Reid's honestly should go down as one of the best coaches in the NFL, in NFL history. And it, for the Philadelphia Eagles, they said, we got to get this guy out of here. I mean, he has run his course, and it's not going to work, and Andy Reid has to go. I mean, it, Mario starts laughing. Doesn't it sound ridiculous? It's not like yeah. Andy Reid got smart once he got, came to Kansas City. Andy Reid was stuck with garbage quarterbacks when he was in Philadelphia. I mean, it was, and he made it to a Super Bowl with them, too, where they lost to Tom Brady. But Andy Reid, even the play at the end was was a genius play. The way he hit McCole Hardman on that on that play w- was fantastic, and he, he had it all ready to go. I mean, those guys said the play was corn dog with mustard was what, what the play was, and sure enough, it, it worked to a T. And he does things all the time, Andy Reid, that you see with Kelsey, just like when they needed a crucial first down, and the 49ers <clears throat> did a great job making sure Kelsey was covered. So it was, it was a read. It was kind of like a read option. If he's not covered, we're going to flip the ball to Kelsey. If he's covered, you're going you're gonna to take off. Boom, takes off. Crazy long drive. They extend the drive. We all know the story. Chiefs end up winning. But you got to tip your hat. It bothers me the Chiefs are the first team in the AFC West to win four Super Bowls because the Raiders had three, the Broncos had three, the Chiefs had, had three, and now the, the Chiefs have the most Super Bowl wins. But I also kind of laugh at this, and tell me if I'm wrong. Both of you guys, and I, and I know Josh was a very, very young. Mario wasn't even born. Do the 49ers beating the Chargers for their last Super Bowl win, do we give them the Charger curse? Because they've lost three Super Bowls since then. Like, the crazy thing, like the lights go out, you know, in the dome. And the 49ers, you know, all of a sudden lose to the Ravens. And then the 49ers have a huge lead at halftime against the Chiefs the first time. And then they're in control of this game, and they miss, they miss the extra point. And I'm like, I think, I think the – 
49ers are charging it now. If you're a 49er fan, you have to be freaking out going, it has been a long time since we've won a Super Bowl, but we talk a lot of trash. All right, there's a lot you hit on right there. First off, Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, I didn't watch Joe Montana's career. P- to me, Patrick Mahomes is the closest thing I've seen to Brady, and I think everybody feels that way from this generation. If he wins one more, I think he's definitively like in the GOAT conversation. Like, Not that he is the GOAT, but he's in the conversation. If you guys remember, D. Ford was offsides in the 2019 AFC Championship against the Patriots the same year when the Patriots beat the Rams in the worst Super Bowl of all time. So Patrick Mahomes could easily have four Super Bowls right now. So I think that's another thing to note. Patrick Mahomes, um, I mean, and and here's another thing also, sorry. In the comments, when you guys say, oh my God, you guys talk so much about Patrick Mahomes. Dude, how could you not? Like, we don't like him. We don't like the Chiefs. We hate the Chiefs, but we respect him. It's like Celtics fans respected Magic. Laker fans respected Larry Bird. Like, it's just how it is. You got to respect greatness, man. The thing that's going to bother me, though, is when Mahomes keeps winning and if the Chargers don't get really good, they're going to compare this to the AFC East with Brady. Well, Tom Brady, who did he face? You know, it was the Bills, uh, Jets, and, and Dolphins. Who did Mahomes face? The Chargers, the Raiders, and the Broncos? We can't get it to that point. We need to be competitive. We got to give this guy a run for his money because right now it's been a cakewalk for this guy through the AFC West. Okay. If you're a, if you're a 49ers fan, where does the blame go? Where does the blame go? Who are you upset with? Is there one person you can point at? Is it a team loss? Are you just, you know, the better team won? Because I don't necessarily think the better team won today. I think the Chiefs just had the best player on the field. You know, I think it's, that's what it is. It's the, they had the best player in the field and they had the ball last. I think that's just something to it. It's like, who has the ball last? And who has the ball last in a situation and win the game? And the Chiefs had it and they had the best player and that hurts you. And like you said, the Niners also, you know, I go back to the muffled punt that they had, right? Like, you don't, that doesn't happen to you. Like, what happens? Should Christian McCaffrey, well, if he doesn't fumble in the first possession of the freaking game, like, I know the Chiefs didn't do anything with that, but still, like, they looked good to start the game. And I think the growth of Mahomes, you kind of saw today, right? Like, they mentioned even the broadcast that to start this game, Mahomes didn't look comfortable in the pocket at all. Like, Bosa was getting home. Young was getting home. Armstead has had a freaking great game, like, the Niners defense was getting home, and you kind of—I was getting like this feeling of like, okay, this is the Bucs Super Bowl over again, where like Mahomes was just getting swarmed and he couldn't do anything about it. But instead of the panic setting in, instead of this insertion of wow, like this team's so much better than the Chiefs, it was, hey, let's reset, let's figure this out, let's grind this out, and let's find a way to win this game. That's what they did. And I'll say this. I think it also came down to who had the better defensive coordinator. And Wilkes is, you did a hell of a job this year, but man, does that go to the Chiefs? Man, is good old, what's his name again? It's, sorry, I always say it wrong. Spag, so it Spagnola. Wrong. Spagnola. I always say that wrong. Well, I'm just going to call him Spags. That's easy for me to say. Um, Spags just, he's a mastermind. He's like, whenever you need that defense to come through, he freaking comes through. And I truly do think. As long as he's there with Reed, this team's impossible to beat. Now, we'll make this argument, though, Dave. And I know we've done this a thousand times. And for everyone listening, that's like, you're an idiot. You're going to fall for this again. Up yours because I'm going to do it again. I think this will be the hardest year from Holmes coming up. I think this division's going to be the hardest. Like, let's say Peyton finds a guy. Let's say he gets Daniels, finds a way. Harbaugh's got his Herbert. Okay. Boom, boom. That's hard. And then what do the Raiders do? Well, who knows? But you still have a pretty talented guy to face there. Like, this could be his hardest division he's ever faced. Um, I don't I don't disagree with that. At the same time, let's say you add Mike Evans from Tampa to that Chiefs team next year. God. And all of a sudden, we're going, man, the, the Chiefs look even better. I mean, they have to keep Chris Jones. I'm looking at Chris Jones going, you guys completely disrespected me. You know, I came back and you guys disrespect me. Who knows? He might have been thinking the whole time, it doesn't matter what happens. And if I win a Super Bowl, I will never forget the fact you guys said I wasn't important. And guess what? I will go to another team. And I'm going to go to a team that basically you'll have to see hopefully twice a year. I would love to see Chris Jones up with the, the Chargers. You know what I mean? He, he's mm-hmm. outstanding. He, he's, he's a great player. But 
you know, I agree with you. Everything gets tougher for Mahomes. It's like when, when you know, you're the champion, even when you see teams at 17-week season, you see some guys that don't look like they're giving their best effort. Nobody goes into a game against the Chiefs and going, hey, this is a week I take off. I mean, the Chiefs are facing everybody's best effort every single time they, they go against them. You know, you ask who I point the finger at in the loss. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't. This isn't one of those games. A couple things. You mentioned some of the turnovers, Mario, and usually turnovers are you know a huge sign of who's going to win and who's going to lose. Christian McCaffrey, as you mentioned, it looks like the 49ers are just going right down the field. Boom, he fumbles. I was shocked that he that he fumbled. It just, you know, it's only the third time he's fumbled, and you're going, oh, my gosh, he, he's not a guy that does that. But then at the same time, the Chiefs didn't turn it into points. Yeah, the 49ers should have had some points, but then the Chiefs did it right back. Isaiah Pacheco did the same thing. They're yeah. about to, to score. He fumbles on the nine. So it's kind of like a wash right there, right? The, the 49ers really didn't do anything with that. A big play that happened in the second quarter was when Dre Greenlaw just went to take the field. Boom. And he blows out his Achilles. It was the most freakish thing you've, you've seen. I mean, like, again, I'm not a Niner fan, and I don't know Greenlaw from anything. Dude, I felt horrible for him. Like, this is the moment you think about in your life when you're in the backyard with your friends playing in a Super Bowl. And over nothing. It was a non-contact injury. Holy cow, man. And now you're looking at a guy that probably won't be able to come back and play till probably next December. You know, that that's that was devastating for the 49ers. But then you go into the third quarter, and then you have J.R. Brown. He gets an interception right away. Uh, nothing really happens off of that. Then you have the botched punt. Now, that was freakish. It wasn't like he was trying to catch the ball. It hit a, hit a teammate's foot. Well, next play, Chiefs turned that into seven points. That one did hurt. Out of all the turnovers, that was the one that equaled seven points. Uh, the missed extra point was big. You know, I understand you go about things differently if you're tying, you're trying to score a touch on all that stuff. A couple things that stood out to me that I was like, wow, that like, kind of surprised. One of the reasons you, you probably wouldn't pick it up if you were watching the game inside the stadium, when Travis Kelsey hit Andy Reid, couldn't believe it. I mean... Andy Reid's an old guy, and he just man charged right into him. Like that could have been really bad, you know that that wasn't that wasn't great. And it was that uh, Rasheed Rice when he lost his mind on Mahomes for saying, "I know he's your boy, but I was open for the game winning touchdown," and he was, he was. But in that situation, Mahomes was looking at one guy, and you know I probably would have too. But you, that was one of those. If the Chiefs would have lost, there would have been a ton of finger pointing that we'd be talking about right now in that locker room. All right. Travis Kelsey bumping Andy Reid was like a guy beating up on a senior citizen. You're like, what is that it man was. doing? Like, that is just like cruel. I hated looking at that. Optically, it was awful. Rasheed Rice, buddy, you're the best receiver on the team. Travis Kelsey is the Chiefs number one option all the time. Every day of the week, he's the number one option. You're great. I'm going to Travis Kelsey, too. Even if he's covered, I'm going to throw the ball to Travis Kelsey. So don't do that. All right, let me ask you a question about this whole Chiefs dynasty thing. Who would you rather not be on the Chiefs next year? Andy Reid or Travis Kelsey? Travis Kelsey. You rather he's not on wait, the Chiefs? Wait, uh, what am I a Chiefs mm -hmm. fan or do I hate the Chiefs? No, a Charger fan. As a Charger fan. <laughs> oh, a Charger fan? As a Charger fan, I'd rather not have Andy Reid. 100%. 110%. Yeah, like I, I, I wish Andy Reid would announce his retirement. Yeah. So you think the Chiefs are a better team if Andy Reid stays and Travis Kelsey retires than vice versa? Yeah. Do you agree yeah, with that? I, like literally, literally, I, I could have given the Super Bowl MVP to Andy Reid tonight. I feel the Just same way when I watch these okay. games. I feel the same way. When I watch these games, I'm like, dude, this is Andy Reid's play calling to a T. Like the game winning touchdown, oh, yeah. you're like, dude, he drew that, like he drew that up. Like it was wide open. Anybody could have made that throw. He's the best play caller I've ever seen on the, in the NFL. Like, I think he's Bill Belichick of the offense. Like, the guy is a mastermind. I just, uh, yeah, we need him to retire. I mean, that guy definitely needs to step down. I was trying to explain to my fiance during the game. See the guy with the mustache? Yeah, he's the guy that's doing all this. Like, he's the evil mastermind behind this whole Chiefs thing. Did you tell her that he was supposed to come to the Chargers for an interview after Kansas City, but he never left Kansas City for the interview? The Chiefs no, didn't I let didn't him out? Her. No. Yeah, that 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 hurts. I mean, Andy Reid literally got fired by the Eagles and was going cross country, stopped for this interview with the Chiefs, and then his next one was with the Chargers, and the Chiefs wouldn't let him out of the office. They signed him right then. They reeled him in with that barbecue. It was that barbecue? Yeah, that barbecue. Yeah, that damn barbecue. It, like, <laughs> speaking of that, like I understand like, that's frustrating for like 
as a Charger fan, like Chargers overall. But like I still every time Reed like has success, I still don't think we give enough credit and or blame and or crap on the Philadelphia Eagles for letting like Reed go. Like we still don't. Like I feel like we still like are a little too light on that, you know? I don't know. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, the I most think they Philadelphia get, thing ever. It's what Philadelphia it's so, does. It's so Philly. <laughs> it's so dumb, stupid, Philly. Dumb idiot. Philly, but Philly's yes. had a tough go. The city of Philly, right? How many things have they lost out on? You know, the yeah, Super Bowls, know. the baseball they've been losing. Andy Reid. I mean, that got to hurt every time you see the Chiefs win. All right, who hurts more, the city of Philly or Tyreek Hill? What are you doing, bud? I think Tyreek Hill lies to himself. I think oh, Tyreek just sure. lies to himself. Yeah, for sure. Gets through with everything. Tyreek Hill yeah. doesn't doesn't deserve anything. But Philly fans, I mean, they're like Philly fans are like us. You know, we want it so bad, and they can see it, and they're almost there, and then it falls apart. It's it's outstanding. It's great. You know, it's outstanding. A year ago at this time, Philly fans were like, "What's the deal with the turf? We sacked everybody. We didn't get one sack. We kept slipping all over the turf." Remember the complaint last year? Yeah, like yeah. they're gonna push oh, well. out another coach that took him to a Super Bowl. Yeah. You, if you there's no organization where your job's more on the rocks if you go to a Super Bowl than Philly, like it's not like a good thing to go to a Super Bowl there. You're like, God, I'm not gonna have a job. Hey, you know, Peterson. See ya. Uh, Philly, Philly has the worst media by far, too. By the way, everyone always talks about New York and what it's like, dude. When Philadelphia, I don't care if it's the Sixers, the Phillies, the Eagles come to town. You look around and you're like, oh my God, these guys are all beaten. They're beaten animals. The way these guys act and. They're they're the meanest guys you've ever been around with, and the players are jerks. The the early '90s Phillies when they were good, worst baseball team ever to come to town. Every guy in that locker room was a jerk. It was it was awful. I love the fact that Philly struggles. Yeah, dude, Cream Hunt, man. If he could behave, he never won a Super Bowl with the Chiefs. He could have been on all these teams. Good point. Yeah, keep your hands to yourself. Also, yeah, how's D4 like doing. <laughs> yeah. If you think about that too, Josh, like imagine if the Chiefs lost this game and or like they fell apart, like the first thing everyone would be talking about would be the Kelsey Reed moment, you know? Like that would be so drawn. Like since it's a win, that kind of goes away. But like if this was a loss, I mean the start of every show the next day is like, hey, can we get footage of that? All right, put that right there. You know, like, is the dynasty over? Is this, are we hitting a rough spot? Like, that would be the story all around. Well, it's going to get swept funny. under the rug now. Oh, yeah. It's oh, it forever. is. Yeah. So I looked at, I looked at uh, Twitter throughout the game. And as soon as it went, all the people who love Aaron Rodgers, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Kelsey, this whole deal, it was, it was so insane about, you know, and they're ripping the hell out of Kelsey and he's having a Pfizer moment and all this stuff. And then I'm like, I wanted to write hey, update, you know, to, to, cause, and, and I really don't care one side or another, but everything that people hated about Kelsey, it was the worst situation for them. But at the same time, Aaron Rodgers had to be waiting for that Kelsey fall on his face moment. And then as you guys said, it swept under the rug. Like Aaron Rodgers still has nothing to complain about, except he didn't play this year. You know, Kelsey has three rings. Aaron Rodgers has one. I'm so tired of us talking about, not just us, but everybody talking about Aaron Rodgers. Like, you didn't play this year. He's so no. irrelevant to me. Like, he, you got to do something with the Jets to prove that you're uh, somebody to be talked about. Aaron Rodgers is one of those guys, man, that just talks and talks and talks. I'm curious what his legacy is going to be when it's all over. The guy that won one Super Bowl that had all the talent in the world, who was the closest thing to Patrick Mahomes talent-wise to me, but with one Super Bowl. I mean, Mario knows as a living in Chicago now. I mean, it's – I truly do think in 10 years or whatever it is, we're going to get a 30 for 30 or, you know, that type of doc, Netflix picks up, whatever. And I think the whole message of it is literally going to be, like for Rodgers, the most talented QB by far to not have as near amount of success as he should have. Like not even close to the success he should even sniff. And that's like the only thing I hang on to of just, oh, I can't stand it. It's like – at least I know you you really like 2010 was great for you and like congrats buddy but then after that I mean you just really did it. very little but to nothing you collect some MVPs congratulations but in a Legacy team game wise, he fell short in a team oh, game he, he fell short farted all over his face the Niners game when it was negative 15 degrees in Lambeau and you have a team from the west coast that didn't <laughs> draft you and you talk smack 
like that was the most brutal thing. That was beautiful to see that he couldn't back up his smack talk. He probably went and took mushrooms and stayed in a dark room for like six months after that. Probably didn't call his parents either. But but anyways, <laughs> in this game, um, I want to go back to a point you mentioned earlier, Dave, because I really, really like this point. And I was thinking this the whole game. You really can't blame this loss on Purdy, right? Like, no, you can't no. at all. No turnovers. Yes. You know, no what, turnovers. What is he supposed to do better? Man, by the way. What is he supposed to do better? Like, he had pressure yeah. in his face the whole game. I think he got hit 11 times. Got hit Dude, 11 okay, times. Okay, so, and a few of them were in the in the face head area and nothing happened. If those from Mahomes getting hit, we've seen that flag a million times. There was nothing that was called to protect him. I do give Shanahan, by the way, a little bit of credit for putting the the game in his hands. I did not expect that. I thought for sure there'd be more more plays on the ground, especially to start that game, because always the talk is your first Super Bowl, you don't feel your hands for the first drive. And that, you know, all of a sudden, hey, Purdy, it's your game. We're going to rely on you to beat the Chiefs. And we all know the Chiefs have a strong secondary. Shanahan put a lot of, you know, basically, hey, we're going to see how well you play it. And he did play well enough, I thought. Well enough to win that game. Mm -hmm. McCaffrey didn't play bad outside of the turnover, but uh, there was a bet out there. Will McCaffrey have 90 and a half yards, you know, the over under? I would have taken, yes. I thought for sure they're going to run the ball a lot against the Chiefs. And they didn't run it as much as as I thought they were going to go. But, you know, jumping around, Shanahan was also the offensive coordinator when they lost the 28-3 to game. And then you lose today. I mean, boy, yeah, that is some tough, uh, some tough time off right there when you're thinking, what could I have done differently? This is the third time Shanahan's lost a Super Bowl by up, in, uh, up by 10 points or more, once as a coordinator and twice as a head coach. Oh, that's incredible. Christian McCaffrey, outside of the fumble, had a fantastic game. He had 160 total yards, 80 receiving, 80 rushing. The difference to me is the tight ends. Travis Kelsey had 93 yards on nine catches. George Kittle had two catches for four yards. I mean, that's the biggest discrepancy right there. I thought George Kittle would be more involved in the game plan. I think everybody felt that way. If you look at the box score and you didn't see what the Chiefs did, you'd say the 49ers probably won this game. Almost everybody played well. Uh, Debo had 33 receiving yards. You'd want him to do more. 33 receiving yards and three catches on 11 targets is actually awful. So I thought Brock Purdy was fine, Mario. I think he did did just enough. Obviously, the the point after that got blocked was a huge deal. I mean, it ended up going to overtime. You would have had one more extra point there. I mean, people are going to talk about that forever. Yeah, and I think the thing that doesn't help Brock is like, you know, Kittle and Debo, obviously your production was low. They also like you could just tell, man. These guys, like those guys were not healthy at all. Like, you can tell Debo from the counter, like God, this guy's not. Like he didn't look like he was one hundred and ten percent. And I get it, no one's one hundred percent at the end of the year. But like, dude, they looked really banged up. They were constantly off the field, constantly the helmets off, constantly getting treatment. Kittle went to, um, back to the locker room at one point. Like his weapons just weren't healthy enough in this game, and yet he still did everything he could to make sure like they were in a chance to win. You know, he hit Jennings for four receptions for 42 yards. Brennan Ayuki hit for a couple times. And he did this all against a extremely talented chief secondary. And, you know, an OT, he led a strong drive that got him points. And are you going to sit here and bark go, well, they didn't score a touchdown, they didn't score a touchdown? Okay, I understand that argument. But at the same time, he put you in a position to win the game. And then he took it back to his defense that's filled with the best linebacker in the league, one of the best edge rushers in the league. Um, on the other side of it, a guy that's you know would be the number one pass rusher on a lot of teams and with one of the best defensive tackles. Oh, and then pretty strong secondary on top of that. Like, left it in the hands of a pretty strong defense that just couldn't get a stop. I, I'm not the biggest Purdy fan. I think Shanahan can help you in a lot of different ways, but I don't think he should take any blame for this. Now, where, where do we see Shanahan now, Dave? Because like you said, now we're at this point where as an OC, he's part of the biggest collapse in Super Bowl history. And he's without doubt one of the best offensive minds in football. But now he's lost two Super Bowls. And he can't get over the hump. So where do we put him now? Like, where is he kind of sitting all of this? And I guess where's also almost his window in a way? Because doubt the team... 
also older. Trent Williams does a lot for you, and he could be out the door soon. <clears throat> All right, so most talented team in the NFL is the Niners. I mean, roster-wise, right? The only difference between, you know, when you break down these teams is you're going, okay, the best head coach and quarterback combination is in mm -hmm. Kansas City. But otherwise, roster for roster, you would take the 49er roster. I mean, not even close. And so um, it, it's going to get harder than easier for the Niners. I mean, the, the window really is a few more years till you have to pay Brock Purdy, right? We talk about that he's mm -hmm. on that contract that helps out a bunch of teams. Look, Shanahan falls uh, dramatically by this game. You know, before Shanahan was a top three coach, I think, in this league to a lot of people. But he can't win the big game. And forget about the head coaching part where he blew the lead. You know, put it this way, he's blown the lead in every Super Bowl that he's been a part of. You know, he had a 10-point lead against the Chiefs the first time, blew that lead. But let's go back to the most important one, the 28-3 to game. You know, you blew that lead where if you would have done the math, all you had to do is run the ball one more time and not stop the clock. And the math would have worked out for the Falcons to win that game. A matter of fact, I don't know if you guys remember when watching that game in the corner, they put on the percentage of the team winning. And I think it was as high as Falcons, 99.8% chance of winning this game. And then all of a sudden he decides we're going to pass the ball and he stopped the clock and it, and it opened the door for the Patriots to get the ball back. And then it turned things around. But if he was worth his weight, guess what? He would have known what he was doing. Andy Reid wouldn't have made that mistake. So you can't put him in the same category as McVay. McVay's won a Super Bowl. He's been to two. He won one of them. So McVay to me is is goes higher up. Andy Reid is so far and above all the other ones to me right now. It, it's it's not even close. Um, I'm a McVay fan, but Andy Reid has separated himself. We always use the phrase he's playing chess. Everyone else is playing checkers. The game's slow motion. He's seen it all. He does plays. If I was a high school coach, I'd literally watch Chiefs games and steal from their playbook because you see stuff all the time that you go, man, that's incredible. The guy that I look at for the 49ers, to me, that's a disappointment. And I'm not going after the Bosa family here, even though he only had four <laughs> tackles and was had nothing to do with today's game. Um, I'm not going after Bosa's family. Um, but the guy I'm going after is Debo Samuel. And I understand he played injured. I got it. And George Kittle, I don't blame because that's up to the 49ers to get him the, <clears throat> get him the ball. Josh and I both had him on fantasy football. We've seen this a million times, so I'm not shocked by today's game at all. Um but Debo, a few years ago, do you remember the playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys where you like turn the TV off and you're going, oh my God, that guy might be the best player in the NFL. Like you're looking at your phone. What college did this guy go to? How did I not see him at South Carolina? I mean, this guy is insane. What a great athlete he was to the point when they made the trade for McCaffrey. We all went, well, who's the, the guy now? Is it McCaffrey or is it Debo? Like you had him head to head of trying to figure out which guy was better. Debo is not even close to McCaffrey. Matter of fact, since he signed that contract, and remember he came out with that whole deal, do not hand me the ball as a running back. I have a career that I need to last. You start developing more as a wide receiver. I don't want to run the ball the way I did against the Dallas Cowboys. And then I'm, I'm looking at him. I'm going, this guy makes a ton of money that doesn't produce the way you think you should with the athlete that he is. And, uh, you know, I was making the joke. I kept thinking in my head of, of Christian McCaffrey's dad when he lost his mind going, are you wearing jeans? Do you think that's a little bit heavy on your legs? Remember that, that whole story about McCaffrey <laughs> saying that his dad made him wear sweatpants on game days because jeans were too heavy for his legs? I'm like, I think Debo's wearing jeans every day. What the hell's going on with Debo? You know? And, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but Debo in the last two years has not been the player I think the Niners thought they were paying. Well, Debo's injuries this year really uh, slowed him down. Thanks for bringing that up, though. A lot of people don't remember that, that Debo wanted to be – uh, receiver and not a running back instead of being a hybrid, which he really is. If you think about it, he's the most tweener of all tweeners in the NFL. He's really a running back and a receiver. I'd even make the argument that he's more of a running back than a receiver, but yet he yep. has 11 targets as a receiver, and I think it really hurts the 49ers. If you could use him more as a running back, which he doesn't want to do, like Dave said, then I think they would be a much better team. Mario, do you feel the same way? Yeah, I think he would, and the same old thing is just – it's also, I think, hard to because, you know, like we're talking about this betting wise throughout this whole week of who's going to have a bigger game, like Ayuk or Debo. Because I always feel like throughout this year, one of the two is going to have to have a big game. Like we, the defense is going to have to kind of choose to take one away. So it's like, are you going to go after Debo or are you going to have to Ayuk? But also, a lot of times this year, it's like Debo just also just didn't show up and Debo. Also, gets a little banged up every now and then. He has, he does a, 
he copies what our good friend Mike Williams does of like, hey, this game, guys, I'm actually not going to show up today. Like he does that like a good amount. Like, all right, that's nice. Um, and the thing that's interesting too is you know Debo's contract extension. They still have to extend Brendan Ayuk too. And I think that guy's a really underrated player. I'm checking right now. They still they still have to extend they have to extend uh Kittle in 2000 and oh actually no they extended him for a while. They got moments on him. But they, I mean I they got to pay a one time with Purdy. And I think when that time comes, whew, that's going to be a lot of people you have to decide who to pay. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be tough. Purdy's your guy. I mean Purdy's yeah, your I think guy. You stick with Purdy. I think Shanahan's uh, hitched himself to Brock Purdy. Who's your top five coach at the NFL? Mario brought it up. Put him in one through five in order. If you need time to think about it, I'll go first. Go ahead. You go first. All right. Here you go. Andy Reid, head and shoulders above everybody else, number one. I'm going to go Sean McVay, number two. I think Sean McVay makes the most with the least. I'll go Mike Tomlin, number three. I'll go John Harbaugh, number four. And I'll go Jim okay. Harbaugh, number five. I like your list, dude. I, yeah, I'm trying to. I'll even throw in a wow. six and a seven. I'll even throw in a six and a seven, you know, because I feel well, good today. Uh, all right, go ahead. Go ahead. I got I got a six. Go ahead. Who's your. Who's, okay, I got six. six. I'm going to go Shanahan and seven. I'm going to go McDaniel. All right, those are exactly. Shanahan that seven. low? Dude, he can never yes. win the big game. For me. Yeah. I mean, dude, he's 0 3. All those other coaches but, ahead of him have won the Super Bowl except for Harbaugh and Mike oh. McDaniel. Right, so I, McDaniels, I'm McDaniel's below him. I'm a yeah, yeah. but I mean, I'm a McDaniel's yeah. fan. I, I I want to see what he's going to do next. I'm a huge fan. So I agree with you. Came in the big game, <laughs> big game, but like I would take him over Tomlin right now because really? he's with the what? Because well, what have you done for me lately, Tomlin? I mean, he made the playoffs with a hor- hor- almost cuss with a bad team. Yeah. <laughs> I, but so he makes it and they go there, but then they just get their asses kicked. And then he hires That's dumb true. offensive coordinators. Well, okay. Here, here's my question back to you. If you were to switch okay. roles, right? Like Shanahan was the coach with the Steelers and then yeah, Tomlin with the 49ers. Well, how do you think they'd be a, a better team or a worse team? I want, I would like to say they'd be a just as good team. Okay. So I think scheme wise, I think Niners would be worse because like, I just, for sure, just because of, because of what we've seen with Tomlin, I think Steelers would be better just because he would find a way with um, what's his name, George Pickens. He'd find a way to get through to that guy in terms of scheme wise. I like mentally, that's good luck. But like, I think scheme wise, he'd be able to get something. So I think he'd do a little bit better with that. And then you have TJ Watt on the other side, and TJ can get you anything. Remember the movie Waterboy, Mario? Where yeah, the kicker is looking. He's like, "Where's my B?" Where's my B? But he says the word, and he finds that yeah. guy with the face mask whose eyes are this big, and goes, "That's my guy. I'm gonna kick it to him." Right? And he, the guy fumbles the ball. That's Shanahan yeah. in the big games. When the camera pans to Shanahan and he's pacing the sideline, dude, doesn't it look like he's freaking out? Like you look yeah. at, I'll do an Andy Reid impression right now. Here you go. Nothing, absolutely nothing. nothing. You look at Shanahan. He's like. <sighs> Yeah. That's literally what he looks like. It's like, dude, that's the difference to me. Mike Tomlin to me is more like Andy Reid, just like stone face killer. God, it, it's also the he does that so well. Like uh, the only person I have thought of that does it really good on the sidelines too. But he's such a bad coach. I, I just think he doesn't think of anything now. Ron Rivera kind of had that look for a little bit. <laughs> like on the but he's actually not going. doing anything. Yes, he's actually plot, not plot twist. Like, yeah, the mic's always like up here. I'm like, hey, should you be talking into that? <laughs> You know, yeah. it's a pretty hoax. Out. Yeah, pretty hoax. No headset. Are you just watching the game? Just like the rest of us. What's your top five? What do you okay. got? Okay. So I go, I go Reed, John Harbaugh. I go Shanahan. Actually, I'll, I'll switch this. So Reed, Harbaugh, McVay, Shanahan, um, Tomlin. <clears throat> what do you got? Five. It's a good list. Yeah. Uh, is, I think it's like Josh is, yeah, right now. You know, yeah. it's funny you mentioned Ron Rivera. Either Ron Rivera is like, this team stinks, this organization's going to fire me anyway because they want to make their own mark with their own head coach. Or I just watch him, I'm like, this guy has low testosterone. Like, this guy has no fight in him anymore. Like, I watched this guy when he used to play linebacker for the Bears, and this guy was a fighter. Now I'm like, this is low T coach right here. Like, what's going on? Do you care? Like, do you care at all about what's happening? Poor Ron Rivera. It's uh, it, it was almost hoping he would be the D- DC in Dallas. 
I'm going, this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> but I just think he doesn't, it doesn't care. It's, it's bizarre. And when he was a coach with the Chargers, man, he was one of my favorite guys to talk to. He was a cool dude. Like you root for Ron Rivera and he's gone through some horrible things in his family that makes you want to cheer for him. But I've hardly ever seen a coach that just kind of throws the towel in in the middle of the season without officially being fired of, of, dude, you have a game on Sunday. Like, are you ready? Like there are 53 guys looking at you to get them prepared. It was really weird to watch. I, you know, I, I don't know. Two things I want to point out though. Okay. Before we, uh, before we get on out of here, one, we talked about O's Perlman in the last show. And it wasn't 31 21, but who caught the game winning touchdown of the Super Bowl? Hardman. Hardman. Yeah, crazy. That was, that was freaking nuts. Two, as I said before, if you hung around, because I told you to hang around at the beginning of the show, I'm going to give you some a Charger nugget here. This is a big mm-hmm. stat. And this will get you fired up again about the Chargers' upcoming season. So, as Mario said earlier in the show, the team that had the ball last was going to win the game. We see this in the NFL all the time, right? One score games. Jim Harbaugh is 20. 20- eight and one when he was in, involved in one score games in the NFL. That's a huge winning percentage right there to be 28 and one in one score games. What has been the Chargers' downfall for the longest time? The one score game. We always end up on the wrong end of the one score game. This, this is big news. Like if I'm Jim, I would have brought it up at the press conference. Have you guys seen my record on one score games? I win at the end. Good teams win at the end. Like the chiefs did tonight. That's crazy. Something's got to give, right? Because Staley, Lynn, and McCoy are one in twenty-eight in one score games. <laughs> Never done good. <laughs> I think that's like the difference between Herbert and Mahomes right now, too, right? Like we I don't know about you guys, but I was watching that game just as soon as I saw that all right, before even OT, Mahomes got a lot of time. I was I think it was like around 150 left. Got two timeouts. He's gonna take this OT or he's gonna win this game. Then he gets an OT, he gets a ball again. I'm like, all right, he's gonna end up winning this game. He's gonna find a way. And then Chargers have not done that all year. Haven't done it for as long as we've done this freaking show. And now still he's bum. I almost cussed. Now still he's idiot. Uh he's gone. And Harbaugh's in here. Like this is a perfect opportunity for Herbert to kind of ride that ship, baby, and turn around and go, no, nah, I'm a little, I'm a little part of the clutch time. Like I, I am in this. I'm one of the better QBs in the league. I'm on that level. And for just God's sakes, guys, can we just beat the hell out of Andy Reid and those Chiefs? Like, can we just make sure they don't go to the Super Bowl again? Because, dude, when they won the Super Bowl, like, at least the Pats, it was, I liked how they were, like, I liked how Bill was just like, yeah, like, it was good. We won the Super Bowl. Like, it was good. Like, I don't like this happiness that they do. Like, I like how the Pats, like, were the ultimate devil. You know what I'm saying? I think the Chiefs are the ultimate devil for a lot of teams. Nobody likes a dynasty. It's good for sports, but nobody likes it. I mean, they've been to three of the last four Super Bowls. I mean, it's it's a dynasty there. You know, it's funny. The get matchup that people wanted to see for a long time was McVay Andy Reid. Remember that one Monday night football game that was insane at the, mm-hmm. at the L.A. Coliseum where the game was supposed to be played in Mexico City and because of the rain or the football field was a disaster, they had to play it in L.A. And it was like the 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 total points, like 130. It was it was insane that was insane. everyone is cut. And we're like, dude, we got to see this matchup in the Super Bowl. It's like one of the most fun games to watch but we haven't seen it yet. The Rams have been there and the chiefs have been there and they haven't matched up against each other. That being said, I I think uh, the time is going to come for the chargers today. When I watched the super bowl and I watched the chiefs fans losing their mind and ownership and everyone on on the podium, I I could picture the chargers there. Like for the first time in years, I felt like that's going to be our turn. You know, we're we're, our turns coming. And so uh, it was, it was, I looked at it different this year than I ever have in the past. I never felt that way going, Man, just one time would be nice if it was, you know, our team that was up there. I honestly feel like we're, we're on our way. And I, I, I don't know. Call me, call me crazy, man. But as I said, I'm, man, I'm all in on this Jim Harbaugh move, and I think things are going in the right direction. Every day, I hear something that Jim Harbaugh has done that I'm going, this is a positive. This, this is going to take this organization in the right direction. Yeah, I, and I feel like today was the last day of pain to me because this season was Brandon Staley's season. We can forget about that after today. Tomorrow is a new day and a new season to me. The new season starts tomorrow, so Charger fans should be hyped about that. Also, Justin, uh, Joey, Jim, Joe. Dude, we're going to have the hardest time this oh. season with all these Jays. We are in for hell. Yeah. Derwin James. You see I mean, Derwin dude, today? Yeah. He was there. Yeah. Yeah. Next time as a player. 
but yeah. um <laughs> Next time all the <laughs> yeah. yeah all the time all, all these jays and 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 i think it was romo or nance or i think it was romo said that joey bosa had a nice play i'm like dude come on get that brother's name right. joey bosa is not in the game and he wouldn't make that play um yeah no, I like what you said there, Dave, because I, I really do agree with that. Like, I remember when the Chiefs holstered up last year, and I think when we were doing the show, you mentioned, like, oh, like, can the Chargers, you know, come back at them and find them next year? And I remember thinking in my head going, no, because Reed's going to absolutely run circles around Staley after he's at 836 donuts on the day. Like, he's just going to sprint around them. And Staley's, you know, trying to find his pen, doesn't know where it is, and he's trying to find everything, and he has no idea what's going on. And at the end of this year, you know, you kind of look at it, you add that question again, and I sit there and I go, well, you know, Herbert could take a step. Harbaugh's not on Reed's level right now, but he sniffs it. He, he'll put together a good staff. Roman, let's make sure that you run every play by Harbaugh. But, you know, like, pieces are there. Mac can disrupt the whole game like Chris Jones can. Darren James can wreck a whole game. Chris Jones can. Keenan Allen could take over a game pretty quickly. Like you, you're the math starts adding up a little bit, and you start comparing things. You're going, are we really that far off? Like, is everything coming enough together? Like, we're not that far off. What they get, Brock Bowers. Like the the what ifs that we're going through right now is the best hope we'll ever get. Let me ask you a quick question. What is more demoralizing? Is it when a quarterback gets called for intentional grounding, or when a quarterback gets a pass batted down? Oh, that's a great question. I think pat it down, right, Josh? Even though there's, I know there's a penalty, loss of down, the whole deal on uh, intentional grounding. That's just, it's just like a mental mistake. I think it's so demoralizing to a quarterback to get your pass knocked down. Like, how the hell did that just happen? Yeah, because like, Brock Purdy got a couple was knocked down. Open. Yeah, you, you yeah. watch the replay and you're like, well, that would have been 12 yards. The Justin Herbert pass getting uh, batted down more than anybody when he's the tallest quarterback in the league still doesn't make any sense in the world. I don't understand how that happens. Yeah. yeah and just, like, Josh, just how does that happen? Because, like, you're ra- you're a little bit taller than Herbert, but, like, how does it <laughs> Like, it's so stupid, but how does that happen? Like, you can see over the line so well. Like, is your release weird? Like, what's Dude, your arms on? up here, it's over seven feet. How the hell does that yeah. happen? Yeah, it's it, – well, the only thing I can think of is that he's looking at his receiver for a little too long and that the, the lineman's watching his eyes, so he's like, okay, here. Yeah. Because okay, if you watch Mahomes, he's so like, boom, right out. Brock Purdy will lock in a receiver a little bit longer, so that's how it gets knocked down. But Jim Harbaugh is going to fix that. I would like to think he's going to fix that. He said he is. He said did he say that? He's going to he's gonna fix that yeah, issue? Yeah, he did. He said that. Okay. He claimed he said hey, we're going to fix that issue. I mean, it didn't make any damn sense. But it, but again, I, you understand why Brock Purdy is kind of still new. Like he's the game's moving faster for him than it is Mahomes. It's complete slow motion for Mahomes. You know, again, I hope this is this time next year we aren't talking about Mahomes. Um, I'm about done with that. <laughs> hey, what's Taylor Swift gonna do next Sunday? She won a album of the year last Sunday and was at the Super Bowl this Sunday. I mean, talk about life's pretty good. Not too bad, right? Um I think life's been pretty good for her. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty good, right? Complaint. Before this, it was pretty. It was pretty good. She'll end up in the State Farm commercials with, with yeah. Kelsey and Mahomes. Whatever, uh, whatever. Oh. Good for her. Go ahead. Yeah. Also, no, I just want to give a quick shout out to all the PR people and that uh, little booth or whatever the freaking whatever that's called booth, whatever you want to call it. Um, cycling all the actors and actresses in every shot. Like there's always a new one. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, there's a new person in there. I'm like, all right, nice job, guys. They, you talked. Miles Teller's, like, peeping his ass in there. Like, going, <laughs> I was, I was a top gun. <laughs> yeah. Eagles yeah, fan. I was like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right, dude. <laughs> to, to get closer to the shot, move to the left. Make sure you look like you're friends with her. High five her. Okay. Don't block Blake Lively. Got it. And you're like, all right, we got the shot. Now let's go promote a movie. <laughs> Who, uh, hold on, real quick. Who's more upset about Taylor Swift having two great weeks? Is it the people that hate Taylor Swift, or is it Beyonce and Jay Z? Oh, wait, does Beyonce last week, beef with her? Jay, oh, last week uh, Jay Z got up on stage and said she has more Grammys or Emmys or excuse me Grammys than anybody, but yet she can't ever win Album of the Year. It doesn't seem right to me. <laughs> and then. Poor Taylor's like, I think I lived this once when Kanye got up and took my trophy away. <laughs> it, was, it was a little crazy last week, too. 
Like Taylor can't escape it. I don't know what it is. Jay Z and Beyonce and Kanye, they hate her. They had to go nuts tonight watching her right there on stage with uh, Kelsey after he won the Super Bowl. Going, we're up here in the booth. Yeah, she seems like uh, the nicest person too. Like, why do people <laughs> hate her so much? Yeah, <laughs> she she seems like one of those celebrities that just like kind of wants to be left alone, but like can't be. Yeah, way too famous. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Right, yeah. Right. And like you can't like be mean to people and say like get the hell away from me because then they're like gonna be like really sad. So you're like, yeah, I'll take a picture. Like, thank you, I love you. You know. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So look, we'll be back this week. This is what I I, want to get to as we uh, talk more Charger football. Number one, we haven't talked about the schedule. Okay, so just so people know, 17 games in a season. This season coming up. Chargers have eight home games, nine on the road. We'll go through the schedule as well. Of course, we'll talk a little bit of draft also, but it's going to be all Charger football as we get ready for the the shows moving forward. The draft, of course, will come up in a few months. But the excitement factor as far as what will they do after the first round, different trades. Um, Also, a lot of talk that Caleb Williams isn't going number one, that it's Mario's guy that he kept dropping for over a year. Drake May, he's the guy. Hello. That a lot of people are saying he is the next Tom Brady. So we're going to get into what all that they? stuff about who the who the right quarterback is in the draft. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're a Charger fan, you like the Bolt City podcast, of course, we appreciate you listening. And, of course, clicking that like button. But um, it, it's always a good time. Hopefully this is the last time we're talking Chiefs winning a Super Bowl for years to come. So, again, thank you for listening to the Bolt City podcast, the Odyssey app, YouTube. We appreciate the comments. Even Mario's jumping in now, responding. It's absolutely fantastic. See, all three of us are reading every single comment. So for Mario Heron, Josh Palais, I'm Dave Palais. Again, this is the end of our Super Bowl show. We'll talk to you next year on the Super Bowl, and we hope the Chargers are part of it because we're going. Calling it right now on yeah. the show. We're, go- we're going next year. All right. All right. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll talk to you later on in the week, everybody. And one more comment about the Bears helmet in the back. Family freaking gift. And it was really expensive. So up yours, get your own freaking expensive helmet. I love you. I'm with the listeners. I'm with the listeners on that one. Push that out of the background. All right. Well, it was uh it was a family gift and it's from the grandpa. So wear it when you drive the moped. Just don't put it on the show. All right. Well (laughs) signed by Dick Buckus. Rest in peace. (laughs) That's fine. That's fine. Just just for that, just for your comment and every other comment, I'm gonna wear it next episode, the whole show. Go ahead, eat your chicken nuggets. Good luck on that. All right. Digestive system direct. Check that sodium then, level. Why don't you flex your bicep? Flex your bicep. <laughs> I can't. I rushed <laughs> <from> my bicep. <laughs> <laughs> my arm's completely busted. All right. That was All a lot right. of fun.